Hey guys, welcome back. Yeah. I had to, oh, I killed 263. That had greatest damage of 78. I have been studying Mother's Grimoire. Do you wish to hear what I have found? What did you find? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. Yet you look disturbed. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. Not unless one also happens to be an ancient abomination. No. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. So why would she risk sending you with me? I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. So what do you intend to do about it? There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. Very well. I'll help you if I can. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds without me. If I am present when she is slain, I cannot be certain that she will not be able to possess my body right then. So I must remain at the camp. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. I'll see what I can do. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. No problem, Morgan. Okay, guys, we're going to cheat a little. Since we just got Zephyron, I at least need a little bit of approval. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. So, what's your story exactly? Well, Whoa. if you're really interested, I suppose it where wouldn't I, hurt to where tell you. Argument came from? I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. That's my mom yelling at him. Oh, like what the heck was that? I just hear yelling from your from Skype, here, and I was like, "What's going on?" I just heard somebody's mom just nagging on someone. Lost glory. Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thados, from majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin far to the west. They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspawn took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. 
But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the dark spawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. What happened then? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigs. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. I see. The noblewoman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. First day in story, thank you. You're quite welcome. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? I'm sure you'll be pleased with the... Huh. So this... This, this... Uh, excuse me. Okay. Always find those. Okay. Get some, some gifts oh. and never get it. That's a cool sword, but do not give that to Stan. It will piss him off. Don't give Laura those ugly boots. Okay. Campity camp. Completed. I'm gonna remind you. Probably just get her one. Why? Thank you so much. Uh, nothing. Oh, thank you. Oh, marvelous. Most kind. You have Bird. excellent taste. Oh, I shall treasure it. Thank you. How nice. Uh, how nice. Give that to Morgan. A fine gift. You have my thanks. Holy shit! Uh, willpower. Holy crap! What the fuck is he Minor doing willpower. Here? Major magic. Oh, that's freaking awesome. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. I'm sure yeah, you... Yeah, I accidentally gave everybody a freaking thoughtful gift, but I didn't give their friend enough. Okay, get up. Five more. Here we go. Skim. Say that's cheating! Shut up. I bought the DLC, I'm Most gonna use it. Kind. <laughs> I was like, shut up. How nice. How nice. Okay. Now let's talk to everybody. I just said this episode was probably like talking at the camp for a while, and then we head up to Redcliffe. You called. Question. I am hardly surprised. 
Do you find Ferelden very strange? To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Is there anything you like about Ferelden? There is interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Cookies? <laughs> yes. We have no such things in our lands. This should be remedied. Keep that in mind. Shall we move on? You sound a bit homesick. Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharon. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. Oh, God. <laughs> dogs don't smell that bad. Skunks don't mind the smell of other skunks either. Shall we move on? Damn. Let's go. As you wish. <laughs> Basically, dis the warden. Oh, he approves eight. Something on your mind? Of course. Fuck the dragon, man. Pop out of nowhere, little bitch. Why will you remain a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen you wear it. I keep it hidden under my pillow. Sometimes I'll take it out just so I can hug it fondly and remember the good old days. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eyes, you know. And what's the real reason? You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. I really do want to know, yes. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right, if you insist. It's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. What did you enjoy about the training? The education, mostly. But also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though. Until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic. So I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Not anymore, no. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good, either way. They can be rebuilt. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Oh, just plus one through all that talking. That's not right. And again, I actually learned something new a little bit. I never asked that question before. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. 
and there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell, and the darkness drew me in. You dreamed of the light? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. And this made you want to help me? In my dream, I fell. Or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Plus two. I've a question, if I may. Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Does your oath expire then? Not precisely. I said I would serve you until you saw fit to release me. One simply assumes that once your Grey Warden business is finished, you would have no need of an assassin to follow you about. Am I wrong? There's always a use or two for a handsome elf. I'm sure I could come up with a few more if pressed. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? Yes. Wait. There we go, you guys. Even the Templars will be impressed by the powers you will command. Have you encountered many abominations apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? No, the ones in the tower were the first I've ever seen. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Seeing the monster that you could be is unsettling, yes. One slip. All it takes is one slip. And everything you are is simply gone, replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. You have doubts? Of late, I have begun to wonder if, if there is any way an abomination can be cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity, their humanity. If one retains one's humanity, one is not an abomination. Yes, it is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. No problem, Wayne. Talk to Zephron again. Then we head out to Redcliffe. Hmm. Yes, we just figured it. All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. Tell me a little about Athena. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? Tiva. The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. 
It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Don't you want to go back? <sighs> it's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Of course, my mouth is better than any gem. <laughs> you have me there, indeed. I, for one, can make no such claim as I never laid eyes on the woman. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home, more than anything else. You, should, you sound like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Your home is still there, Zevran. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden, a woman who then spares my life? I could not. Now you're flattering me. I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? No, by all means. And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Plus six, all right. Save. Probably to talk to the dog, too. The dog won't stop barking. What is your desire? Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? You must have a quiet history with women, I mean. <laughs> this could be a sensitive topic, my dear lady. Are you sure you wish to voyage there? I asked, didn't I? As you wish. Let me start by saying that my history is varied, indeed. It has also not been restricted to women. Does that offend you? Should it? Perhaps. That is entirely up to you. I grew up amongst whores, my dear. Oh my God, Sex Rappy is best when done well, and truly, oh. that is my only rule. Do I prefer oh, women? Rappy yes, yes, I believe I do. But you must understand that a certain open-mindedness is oh sought by God, the crows the and their recruits Rappy for very good reasons. <laughs> I think I understand. This is a new path I am on now. It would be interesting to see where it leads. Already, it has been many new things. I cannot change my past, obviously. I regret far more than the men and women I have been with. And if that is more than you can bear, well, then it is good we know now, yes? Yes, it's good we know now. It does bother me, Zinfran. You're a better person than most, I suspect. Ah, enough talk of the past. It is what lies ahead that is important, no? Yes. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. Uh-huh. 
Good. He will fall our enemy. Fell, uh, he will fell our enemies with the stench. <laughs> that may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Go ahead. He is getting a little rank. <laughs> Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. Poor thing. Okay, now we go to Redcliffe.